Hi everyone, it's Kate Shiller from The Nocturnal. So today with me, I have the team behind Hulu's Books of Blood. It's a psycho thriller, kind of intertwines different horror stories together, um, different tales based on the work of Clive Barker. Uh, my name is Anna Friel and I play Mary Fluinski. Um, I am Rafi Gavron and I play Simon. Great. So what past roles prepared you for this film? Life. Uh, I think uh, empathy for those who have been um, stabbed in the back by frauds. Uh, there you go. Uh, so how, did you, how did you get involved with this film? I got sent a script. Uh, I've never entered uh, this genre before or played with it. And uh, I spoke to our lovely director and writer, Brannon, and he said he wanted to go at this uh, differently and set a new tone, which I think it is. It's kind of retro genre. Um, and I said, yes, and went to Nova Scotia and shot it. Yeah, yeah, me, same situation. Um, I just needed a job. Um, and so um, they sent me a tape to make and I made it and I was lucky enough to get it. I guess going off that, what about this role is going to stun your fans? Because you you haven't been in this genre before. So like, what what about it that they're not going to be used to seeing from you? Uh, well, nobody will ever have seen Rafi in the in the prosthetics that he, he's in. They're really quite extraordinary. It took a brave man to take six, seven hours to get into it every day. Um, so his fans will see an amazing costume, which is nice because it's not all computer generated. It's actually real. Yeah, that's true. Very true. So that, yeah. that's that's my answer for Amana. There you go. Um, <laughs> sorry, crap. No, I don't know. Go, go, go. I don't know. Uh, I don't. I think that's the, the that's. I don't know. It's the first it's time. A genre for you. Yeah, it's a genre yeah. for me. I've never done that kind of genre before. And do you guys like like all the creepy, crawly, gory stuff that you know of the genre? Is that no, not at all. Can't stand it. Uh, I'm. I get quite freaked out. So I was saying before I couldn't um, watch a horror movie on on my own. But I think this is more of a kind of psychological thriller mixed with horror. Um, I like that yeah. combination. I like things like The Ring and Sixth Sense. Things that are, are more based in reality. I find more frightening. Yes. And out of then, all the Hannibal movies and things like that, that's kind of horror. And then, so like, how was it? working with each other like did you get were you afraid of him in a suit like what was that like uh, Rafi do you want to go take it or should I um How I'll was take it working it. with um, me yeah no exactly first of all I think it's hard to be afraid of me because I'm just you know a moron um and slightly clumsy um but I uh I got lucky with Anna in fact I did this movie because of her um it was based on her career and acting ability and a friend of mine also who knows her and hired her and thought she was great and I know Anna made a call about me too and said is he is he okay and someone said yes he's cool and um we just got lucky because for me it was always about who is you know I love the story and I thought it was well written but it was who was who was going to play opposite me and so once I heard it was Anna I was cool. Rafi's a delight and I'd work with him any time and he, he approaches his work in the same way I think I do he's really prepared and wants to make it as believable as possible which is all we can do yeah and then when did when did the shoot when were you shooting when was production I have no idea when was that it was a year oh, oh it was like it was right it was about just be, October up until through December Christmas. last year in Nova yeah. Scotia so yeah. we had the beautiful land yeah, October through Christmas. So it was really quite cold. <laughs> and then, so fans are going to watch this. Uh, what, if you were them, what snack would you prepare to get ready for this premiere um, to have like the best, you know, October horror movie night? Popcorn with red coloring. <laughs> like That's hilarious. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would say Bloody sweet popcorn. Potato sweet potato fries. I fucking love sweet potato fries. With lots of ketchup. Yeah, ketchup. It has to be some blood involved. You know I, what I mean? I hate, I hate ketchup. <laughs> I can't. I think, 
I, but I, I, because I've got a place in LA, and I, I remember um, Halloween being a bigger event than Christmas. And I think it's I, it's such a shame that because of all the restrictions that they're not able to do that. So it's going to be Halloween at home, and I, I think this is a good movie for that. Agreed. And if you guys were in the other tales that happened in the film, who would you be? Like, who would you choose to be? What other character would you choose? Well, Brit's character, because I really relate to her about the uh, over-sensory, um, what's, mm. what's the word for it? But over, when you hear everything. Yeah. My daughter calls it, the word, you eat it. too loudly, it's called in England, they call it chumming. C-H-U-M. Yeah. And you can hear, and I, I, I can't bear if someone's tapping or making, singing the same song all the time. I start to twitch, so I, I can really relate to her frustrations. I would definitely be uh, Yule's character. Um, yeah, I forget. I forget his name. I, I, but he's he's a G, and I like that role. So um, yeah, me too. I love Yule. They got a really cool cast together for this. I thought Brandon yeah, was, um, chose well. Have you gotten much interaction with the other cast members? Yeah. No, we all crossed. Well, not oh, we we kind of crossed over. We finished our. We started the the schedule. Then I went back to England for two weeks, and then we went back to finish it. So we had a little bit of a crossover. But Yule, we went out drinking um, the odd tequila with. He introduced me to a new drink, <laughs> and he's just cool as beep. Um, oh gosh, my headphone, earphone. But um, yeah, and I hung out with Rafi a lot. We went and visited lighthouses and went on some hikes. Yeah, it was nice. And did you guys interact a lot with the author, Clive? Never met him. Never met him. Never I met him. I might never be able spoke to see him. No, Brandon, Brandon had all the contact with him. But I, I, I hope this gone. Oh, have you read any of his books? Just this one, but no, but it, I'm, I'm going to. I think there's, uh, the, they're re-releasing, I think, um, the books of Blood. Um, they're doing a new edition um, down to this. And I, I, think, I think they're hoping to make more books of blood. So in in this genre, there's so many like twists and turns. How do you not break character knowing like, cause you're shooting not in chronological order. So you know if something else is gonna change. How do you not break that character and remain, you know, in characters so that you can, the audience can, you know, accurately feel what you're feeling and, you know, get to the story where it needs to be. Like you, you don't give any, anything away. Uh rehearsal i think rafi and i we're all in the same hotel so we'd we'd run lines at night so we knew exactly what we we're doing but i think after 30 years of doing this career that's one of the main things that is expected of us you you, you don't preempt everything nothing's shot chronologically unless you're doing or, or played real um chronologically unless you're doing theater so i think that's just part and parcel of the job that what's expected of us and then, so without giving too much away, how do you think viewers are going to react when they watch this film? Uh, hopefully they think about it and yeah. Go on, Drake, you take it. No, I just, I, I, I hope they appreciate the story of it because that's what it's about. You know what I mean? Um, I, I hope they relate to the characters like any other story. Um, for me, it's not about the genre, it's about the story, right? So, you know, when people believe that, then that's all that matters to me. And so I'm speaking only for my Nanana's story, um, which is, you know, my concern is that, that, you know, that they believe it and that they, you know, have some love for the characters, some understanding and some compassion um, and enjoy it. Yeah. And, and like the way I, th I think um, seamlessly the stories mold into each other. And that was my biggest concern saying, how, how is it not going to be jumpy? But um, the way that they they mold and blend a bit like just kind of Twilight Zone or, Christ, you know, ch Children of the Corn, and it's, it's kind of mm. got old school, old school humour to it as well. Mm. And and you, hopefully people get a bit a bit, a bit frightened because that's the part of the point of it and want to watch it again. And you've seen the full movie, at this point. Yep. Which was interesting because obviously we, we we I paid a lot of attention just on when we read the script on our on our part, section of the script so it was really nice to kind of watch another movie within a movie when I saw it for the first time. So what was yeah? Tell me a little bit more about watching it for the first time. Not only seeing your part, seeing everybody else's parts. I got my um, neighbors because I, I every time I've got a screening of anything I get them and, and don't say anything just so I get their reaction because they're pretty brutally honest with me even if I'm in it or not. Um, and 
they were quite freaked out and they liked it and said it's it's got a really unique individual tone so I thought that was good feedback and the next day they were still thinking about it yeah likewise but without my neighbours I guess going back how you got involved in this project what about this project made it you know something you had to do the story it, it just the, the way it was written I spoke to Anna about it and I was like why the fuck are we doing this genre because we're I, not used to it and and Anna was just like it's the story there was something about the story and I felt the same way as she did in, in that sense it was just there was something I believed there was something meaningful you know what I mean yeah and I, I think because Mary's um such a, I, I, an empath we're talking about I want to try and make sure I don't repeat myself on before but um I, I like the retribution that, that comes to Simon. You know, he tries and takes the piss out of Mary and um, he gets his comeuppance and we all like that. Mm. The, the rise mm. and fall of a baddie. Mm. And then, so Rafi, what did you love about your character most? Um, uh, he just, it, it, you know, I found him to be damaged um, and that was why he was behaving that way. And I found the manipulation to be interesting um, and the way he went about that and, and preyed on her, so to speak. And that, that drew me to wanting to, to do it. Um, he is a villain in his own right, but, you know, this kind of, kind of ca charismatic con artist, which I hope I did a good job with, um, is, is something that I found interesting to play. Is that something that you kind of lean to, like playing the more villainous character? Well, yeah, I mean, I did that in A Star Is Born and everyone hates me as a result of it. Um, and I, I think so. I don't think I can avoid it. Everyone keeps fucking casting me in these roles. So I'm just going to, I guess I'll take the work I can get. But it's, it's definitely more fun for me to play the villain. Yeah. And do you want fans to hate or to love your character? Do you want them to see like the other side of them? Or do you really, want them? how do you feel about that? Honest, honestly, I want them to find me sexy. And, uh, but I don't think, I don't know if that's going to happen because I don't know yeah. if I was skinny and making the movie, but you know, it's worth a try. I think, I think you pulled that one off, Rafi. I don't think you have to worry about that one. Uh, if my does. opinion means anything. <laughs> it does, so thank you. And then what was the weirdest part? Like you had to, especially, you know, wearing that suit, you know, all the, I guess, like blood that was all around you and things like that. Like The weirdest part uh, is that you, you, you couldn't, you couldn't talk to him when he was on it. You just go, don't not, don't talk to me. And you try and give him words of, <laughs> to console him. Guy, yeah, people, I did not. So I did like, not. I did not like that. I just didn't even, I guess I must have missed that in the script because when I got in it, they, they said there's this suit you got to put on. I go, what the fuck? What did you mean a suit? And then suddenly I'm stuck in this thing for like 12 hours a day. It was important <laughs> for the movie, obviously, but it was a nightmare and very weird because it was silicone. So it covered my whole body and kept me very hot and then very cold. And so it was the strangest thing. Never experienced yeah. anything like it. And going, going to the bathroom was a bit tricky, wasn't it? Oh, don't get me started. <laughs> you had to watch what he ate before. You just the, the trick with Rafi, if anyone um, wants to work with him, is just to have a, a big supply of chocolate and you can bribe him with chocolate. It works. That's it. Yeah. And what was it like walking from dressing to set in that suit, walking past everybody? Like, <laughs> did you fight any um, I Five was walking people. like I'd. I was walk yeah, five people. I was walking like I'd gotten an enema. I was complaining about everything. Uh, it was uh, it was ridiculous, but um, I, I it came out good, and that's all I care about. And the makeup people were so amazing and patient with me and lovely. So I was proud of it and the work that they did. And Anna, would you have traded places and be in the suit instead? Yeah. No, it just it, I, I just kind of wanted to wind him up and tell him stories about um, Jim Carrey uh, playing the Grinch and how I was thinking how he had to do that every single day. I'm like, come on, Rafi, you've only got to do it for five <laughs> days, six days. We can get through. <laughs> we're, we're there. Um, I done. I did t uh, Tales from the Crypt when I was about seventeen. They came over to England and got a lot of English cast, and I had full prosthetics then. I've done quite a lot of prosthetics, but never full body like he had to go. I, and I I didn't envy him. For one second, but there, but then again, the end product you kind of that's kind of good for your showreel. You have to have a body like Rafi's to fit in that suit. And then, 
So who, when you were shooting, who had the most bloopers? The most bloopers? Mm -hmm. uh, probably me because, uh, yeah, Rafi, I don't think Rafi ever got one line wrong. So probably me. And also because I was doing an American accent. So sometimes I'd be like, oh fuck, I can hear my British. Sorry, oh <laughs> beep, I can, I, I, so I'd have to sometimes go, can I go again? Can, and Rafi was good too, because he'd say I could, I could hear the British because we didn't have a boys coach on set. So it was from memory of well, playing American uh, before. She, she killed it, but like, yeah, we, we yeah, there was, sometimes we just couldn't stop giggling and that screwed oh, yeah. everything up. And so we had to go again and people got a bit fed up with that. And not because it's a funny movie, it's just like between me and her, it was always some bullshit. So it was like, it was so funny. Yeah, we did. We did a lot of giggling, didn't we? Yeah. I, I'm I'm bad at, at corpse in, and it and people don't. It, it it's it's funny to the actor, but then you get nervous, and and then that you're gonna laugh, and then you get in more trouble, which makes you laugh even more. So oh, it's, so it's funny. not a good move. <laughs>
generally watch anything I do. Uh, but, but because I knew I had to do this, I, you know, I, I, I watch it or if I'm going to the premiere, I'll watch it before I go in the room so I know what I'm walking into. But I generally don't like to watch anything I do because there's nothing I can do about it once I've done it. You know what I mean? I can't change it. So I, I, I reacted. I don't know. I didn't have any, any type of reaction. I was pleased, actually. I was very pleased at, as to how it came out. And I called Brandon and I told him so. Um, I, thought, uh, I thought it came out really good. And I thought it did have a simplicity to it that I thought was, was key for, for me. So, yeah. And then how do you think viewers are going to see the movie? Um, how you, you know, are they going to be scared? Is it, you know, something that's going to be. I think they're going to be scared. I think they're going to need hugs uh, while they're watching and popcorn. Uh, I think they are going to be scared. It's pretty damn scary. Did, did you see it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty scary. You know, I mean, there's some really, really terrifying things in it. Uh, so, yeah, I think people are going to, I think, I think, listen, I think uh, Clyde Barker fans will be very, very pleased at this, you know, with this, with this film. And is that something you're into, all that, like, gore and, like, creepy crawly stuff and everything like that? I'm not, not necessarily, I'm not into it and, and I'm not not into it. I, it's just, uh it's um, it's on a part by part basis. You know I mean, I, I like supernatural things. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, if you feel this is supernatural, then yeah, I'm, I'm into that, but I don't seek out gore or, you know, or stuff like that, you know. If it's there, I, it doesn't bother me. I don't mind anything that's genuinely earned by a story, you know. And then how did you get involved in this project? Uh, they, they, they sent, I sent a, they sent a script. They wanted me to uh, audition for it. And, uh, and I, and I did, I went there, I went to my agents in New York and I, and I made a tape and then, um, and then I had a conversation with Brandon and, and you know, and then we, we were on our way, you know, was, you know. If you couldn't play your character, who else would you, you know, trade places with to play? Frida's character. <laughs> I want to play that character. Um, no, I don't. Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't know. I, I. I. don't. I don't think of things that way. Um, I. Uh, I think of it as as an orchestra, and then you know, every an orchestra has many instruments, and you need every instrument to play its thing well in order to make the orchestra. So I was just happy to to play my part and then, you know, within the context of the whole. And then, so when viewers are gonna be watching this, it's gonna be October. How do they make it the perfect movie, movie night, the perfect, you know, Halloween month movie night? Like what snacks should they have? Like, should, is this something that you watch the lights off? Should you watch with other people? Can you watch this by yourself? Well, I think, uh, I think, Definitely lights off because you don't want any glare on your screen to d distract. I think, uh, I think some popcorn uh, and, uh, you know, kick, you know, cuddle up with your favorite buddy and then watch, you know, and just let the horror fly, fly all over you. And just plain popcorn, any toppings, anything fun? Plain popcorn. I mean, if you know, if you want to have like a meatball sub, uh, that's always something I enjoy eating, but you know, that's a very, might be a weird thing to eat during a film, but you know, I like meatball subs, but I think popcorn because it's not as messy, you know? And then did you get to um, see the other characters? I'm sorry, the other castmates uh, when you were shooting or no? Everyone was did, I get, did I get to see them? Yeah, did you guys get to interact at all? Oh yeah, I spent a lot of time with Andy. Andy and I spent uh, time with Anna and uh, and um, and Rafi. Um, we would we were in the hotel. We would hang out downstairs in the hotel. The, uh, they all made fun of me because uh, and Joe, Joe the producer. Uh, they all made fun of me because I'd become very good friends with the staff uh, at the hotel. You know, when you when you're in a hotel for a while, you become friendly with people. Um, 
So, um, yeah, I spent, I spent a lot of time with them. Very, very nice folks. Um, and I spent obviously a lot of time with Andy because I, I work with Andy, uh, uh, most of the film and, uh, he's in, he's a great actor and, and a great guy. Mm -hmm. Um, is there anything you had to do to prepare for this role that you didn't in, in the past? Yeah, just the, the rat part, you know, how does one react to that? That's always a, an odd thing to do. <laughs> it's because it's such an, you know, you, you know, the, there's no, there's no past, past experience to, to draw on. Well, from the last time I was eaten by rats, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, <laughs> so yeah, you know, you, you gotta imagine these things and you gotta find a way that how are you going to get there? You know, how are you going to get there and make it look, uh, make it, make it look real. <laughs>